one. Yep. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself. My, my name is Wes Hagen. I was uh, initially uh, helpful in uh, putting together the Santa Rita Hills Appalachian with yeah. everybody here at this table. Um, but sort of, I'm, I'm sort of the antithesis of Ken Brown. Ken started uh, very, very focused in Santa Maria Valley. I started very focused in Santa Rita Hills and we've switched. I'm now uh, working with the Miller family who own Biancito. And of course, uh, Ken is very uh, structured and focused on Santa Rita Hills. I've asked myself how in 12 minutes we can give you more information about what we love as far as the people that really drove a, bu a bunch of this Appalachian. And this is the question that I want to ask the panel. In three minutes or less, what has kept you here in the Santa Rita Hills as long as you've been? What is it that grounds you to this place and makes this place inimitable? What makes this place special? And what is it that makes you want to make wine here for your career? And uh, I think we're gonna actually um, start right here uh, with Bruce. What do you think? Why are you here? Okay, I'm here because of the 76 Sanford and Bennett. <laughs> I was in Northern California making wine up there and there was a lot of buzz going on about it. And again, I found out Pierre Lafont's vineyard was two miles away from Sanford and Benedict. That's why I'm here. And we planted Pinot Noir the next year uh, with cuttings from Sanford and Benedict. Um, Michael Benedict called it Martin Ray. Richard calls it Mount Eden. Um, but it's a beautiful place to make wine. I'm really lucky. Brian? I'm here because of dumb luck. <laughs> <laughs> My parents bought the property that is now Babcock Winery and Vineyard. Uh, they lived in Long Beach at, at the time, and there were restaurant tours. My dad was a dentist. And they were just looking for a place to get away to as much as anything. My dad was really kind of a renaissance man and uh, you know he had this idea maybe it'd be fun to you know plant some vines and uh, make a little wine but uh, they had no idea of you know where what, what it would always gonna look like today but that's where I started and um, so you know once you get here and you sink your fangs into this place why leave? I mean, exactly. Right? Um, this is a place I've always had sort of this kind of like, you know, open-minded kind of libertarian spirit. And this was a place where you could come and, and, and you, could, you could throw whatever you wanted to throw against the wall to see what it, if it would stick. You know, there was no real formulas here. And, and people like Jim Clendenin and, and a couple of these other guys were my mentors. Instead of being criticized for doing something a little crazy, you would be applauded. And so it's that spirit, it's still alive today. And it's, yeah, it's still yeah. really yeah. propelling me um, to not only, you know, work in the Santa Rita Hills, but the whole county, the whole Santa Barbara County is just going nuts right now with viticulture and all these, all these exciting things. So this, this was the place of freedom for me in winemaking. And, and once I sort of, you know, realized that about five years in, I thought, why would I ever leave a place like this? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So... I'm no spring chicken, but I, um, I'm also not even really a pioneer, if you think about it. And I mean that sincerely. I was, when I got my Santa Barbara Winery job, I was 21, barely 21. I'm teaching French at UCSB. And I thought, oh yeah, 5.50 an hour, I can drink wine. They probably have crackers, I give tours, I'm pretty dramatic. Great. And, um, and I didn't get the job the first time, but I, I, I worked really hard and I persevered and I got the job. And um, I didn't know Chardonnay was a grape. I really knew nothing. I could pronounce it, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, but what's, but why, why this is important is that for 31 years now, I've, I've only worked here. So I'm very provincial. And actually, my living in France and teaching French and that, that spirit, I've never worked in wine in France. I was a college kid. Um, but I'm very provincial, and I'm very protective and defensive of this. This is all I know. So the first vineyard that we ended up planting is 10 yards away from where I was raised at Santa Barbara Winery. So I am this place, right? And I've never even looked anywhere else. And so it's a different perspective. Sometimes I'm asked, how did you pick Santa, how did you pick Santa Rita Hills? And I didn't, you know, it, it's just, it's all that I know. Yeah. And that's all that I will ever know. 
um, very happily. Um, thanks to all these people. That's what. Right. Well, like, like Bruce, um, it all started with tasting with Richard and Michael uh, when I first came to the Valley here in 76 and, and, and tasted their 75 vintage, which was the very first one. Uh, they had dug sort of a cave <laughs> in, uh, in kind of the limestone area of, of the ranch there, kind of across from the barn. And in there were like three barrels. How many barrels? I can't remember. It wasn't three barrels of their 75 Pinot Noir. A barrel and a half. A barrel and a half. <laughs> I think I tasted the full barrel. <laughs> um, and then subsequently, the 76 vintage, which of course went on to gain acclaim you know, throughout the state. And uh, that, that set the precedent you know, for my interest in, in Santa Rita Hills. And again, like I said before, when Norm Huber planted his Chardonnay vineyard, he came to Gainey, I was a winemaker at Gainey at the time, and he said, um, you know, have some Chardonnay from, it wasn't Santa Rita Hills yet, but it was far enough west where I thought, that's, that's the place for Chardonnay. And the same thing with the Marks family when they planted Sweeney Canyon. And then uh, Brian was instrumental in having two uh, friends of his father plant uh, Mount Carmel, uh, Sort of this Long, Long Beach Mafia, I called them. <laughs> and, uh, and I was able to source some fruit from Mount Carmel as well. And then uh, just on and on. And then I, I was fortunate enough to find property to lease uh, where I planted Faciega Vineyard, just across from La Quintana yeah. in uh, 1998. And of course, you know, when, when, you, when you invest a lot of time and energy in planting a vineyard at a certain place, that's, 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 you're in for the long haul. That, that uh, really roots you into a place and a site. And I can just mention all the vineyards, La Encantada that I've worked with, Sanford and Benedict, Mount Carmel, um, Rita's Crown, Hilio Bruce, Zodovich, Huber, I mean, just on and on. I have really invested a lot of my creative energy to making wine from a lot, a lot of different vineyards in Santa Rita Hills. And, and they've all turned out great. I mean, it's that's what keeps me going, is one vintage after another, and it's a great wine, and another great wine, and another great wine. So there's no reason to quit. Yes. Yeah, that's right. because I was in quest of making great Pinot Noir. And um, I had no money, um, but I had a vision. And I um, bought property that was much bigger than I could afford and figured out a way to make it work. And um, am forever grateful to all of the winemakers that uh, buy Fiddlesticks Vineyard fruit and make extraordinary wine. And I just um, stay here because proof is in the bottle. And we're here tonight to taste some of the successes, many of the successes, all of the successes of what Santa Rita Hills is all about. Great wine that started many, many years ago, starting in what 1975, and continues to this day to um, improve the breed, take advantage of new information, um, uh, you know, uh, re-tweak um, what we know has been great, even from the early years when maybe the vineyard wasn't planted in what is, con uh, like Sanford and Benedict, what was planted to be the um, uh, maybe a, a ideal viticultural, um, you know, success and make great wines. So we have the benefit of our place, the climate, the exposure to the ocean breezes, um, the soil structure, um, and then all it took is the passion of everyone on this panel to share our wines with you.